Hey guys, and I'm here with a bus, a school bus, except it's not yellow. Actually, no, it's not a school bus at all. It is the new Honda Odyssey. And this is actually the fifth generation of the new car. It's a 2018 model. Really popular, these cars with Honda. They've sold, what is it, 2.7 million of these have been sold. This is the latest model. Now, some of you people, I've put up posts on this car before, and some of you have said, oh, it looks a bit smaller. It's not smaller, it's the same size. Don't get it confused with the Odyssey J. That's a completely different car. This is the full Odyssey. It is slightly narrower, but somehow they've actually managed to free up more room inside despite being narrower. But when I say slightly, I mean like fractions, like a few millimeters, as much as makes no difference. Essentially, it's the same size as the other car. Comes in three trim levels. You start at 139,900, and that's for the LX trim, which is about $38,000. The mid-level car is the EXL, that's EX-L, and that's 152,900 dirhams, which is $42,000. This one, of course, they've given us the top spec car with all the bells and whistles on it. This is the touring car. It's 172,900, which is $47,000. Now. Under here, it still has a 3.5 litre V6. In this case, it puts out 280 brake horsepower and it's made it to a 10 speed automatic now. So take a look at the key. This is the key fob. And of course, from the key fob, if I press and hold that, I can actually open the rather large boot. There we go. Check it out. So it's touring on there. Now check out that, that is cavernous anywhere you put it. That is huge, huge. I mean, this is essentially a van. This is pretty much a van now, look at it. But then of course, the third row of seats are down in this particular instance. Uh, just before I show you the third row of seats, there's a, a space over here, a little box here with a power outlet. There you go, uh, it's one of those. And inside here, it's quite interesting because if you run out of fuel, you actually have a little funnel. That's so bizarre, why have they put that there? But I uh, ho hope they're not expecting people to run out of fuel. Unless that's for water. No, I think it's for fuel. And on this side, there is another bin over here. There's another bin over here. Uh, there you can see from here that there's two cup holders for third row passengers, including they get their own AC vent and they get a headphone jack with a volume control. And on this side, a power outlet. On that side, there isn't a power outlet, but they get the other things as well. And they also get a sunshade. I'll show you a bit more of that in the middle in a minute. I want to show you these seats. Split flow holding, 60-40. How do they work? Well, let's grab this one. Don't know if you can see that from there. And it just goes around like that. And then you grab that and you pull it. And that's it. You're done. And the interesting thing about that seat is that not only is it quite spacious. Actually, I wonder if you can film me getting in. Should I just get in from here? Because that would be easier for me. So, here we go. As, as graceful as you like. Don't know if you can see that. But actually, pretty good amount of space. And actually... Quite surprising because despite the fact that I am what six foot two and a bit now this seat here actually is a bit reclined. Right there you go. So if I push it, right, so that's more normal now, and uh, I can push that headrest up, and that is actually quite comfortable and not too bad at all. That's, I'm, I'm quite surprised with that actually. So really, actually, you could get at least two, if not three, adults of a reasonable size quite easily sitting in the third row. Now, what I want is, before I put this seat back down again, actually, how do you get that down? You have to press this button there, and then that goes back down. Actually, yeah, it moves forward, and then press it. So that goes back down, that can fold easily in there. I want to show you the full amount of luggage room that you get, even with third row in place, because with a lot of these cars, once you put the third row up, you find you've got no luggage space. Not this one. What's this? Now check out that huge bin down there. That's quite deep. I mean, that just almost goes right down to the floor. And with a rubberized floor mat, actually, so you can put wet stuff in there as well. I reckon you could get four or five suitcases in there, full-size ones. So that's really, really handy. So um, that's good for the luggage space and for the rear, uh, third row seats. Let's now try the middle row. So the other trick you can do with the key fob is if you just press and hold, and that happens. Now, as we're doing that, you can see here, this is one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, is that the actual rail where the door comes in from is embedded into the lower part of the rear window. So thereby, you can't actually see it on the lines, which is a bit odd because as you'll see from this cutaway shot that I'll magically insert now into the edit, there's a lot of lines on this car because everything from the, the side skirt to the chrome bar at the top to the style waist, swage line in the middle and then the waist protector in the middle, there's a lot of lines and then plus these shades that they've got as well on these windows, which I don't like. But um, so there's a lot, it's quite fussy and then they've gone to all the trouble of removing the rail, maybe to remove the other lines. But having said that, this is the top spec car 
so it's got all the options on it and that's probably why it's got all those bits and pieces on it so again now that i'm in here i've got a choice of either using the handle to close the door or in this case just use the button and there it goes and as we're closing it you can see that the actual mechanism for the door is under the floor so there's like a sandwich cavity underneath this floor where that mechanism sits and uh, that's how they've actually made more room in this because they've moved some of the stuff some of the motors and stuff underneath the floor and actually made the cabin a bit wider over here you've got uh, window control lock uh, sunshade uh, and a quite a, a quite a narrow door pocket again another way really that they've made it uh, more spacious in here that's a door pocket just for like magazines and newspapers magazines and newspapers who the hell reads those anyway so a, a, a small bottle can fit there as well what else have you got here two cup holders in the back there and down there you've got an hdmi uh power uh, cable uh, socket there and you've got yes two usb sockets yay i like my usbs there's two of those back there. There's a remote here. What's the remote for? The remote is for the 10.2 inch screen, which is up here, which is not as quite as wide as the old one, because the old one had a wide screen one, but this one is probably just as functional. And one of the features that this screen has, which I can't show you at the moment because the car is off, um, but um, so when kids get in the car, the first thing they do is they're like, oh, are we there yet? So there's a, there's a thing that you can press on the dashboard, which is a are we there function, kind of. And essentially, if you've programmed in the destination into the sat nav, it plays games on here that are timed down to when you arrive at the destination or something like that you know but uh, it's very clever and very convoluted at the same time but there you go so a nice little feature to keep people amused and then the other feature is these seats because there can actually be three seats in here one of them has been removed you can actually have three uh, captain's chairs if you like here because they've got armrests that's why we can call them the captain's chairs on both sides now the thing about these seats is that not only do they move forward and back for a little bit more room this is the rear most position but they do this trick of moving inboard like that see so like if you were for example using this as i don't know a wedding car and you had the happy car why would you use a honda odyssey as a wedding car how sad is that to have an odyssey as your wedding car but anyway if you did then the happy couple could sit here nice and cozy and together and it'd be lovely wouldn't it and you get some great pictures and stuff or if you got in here and then the person sitting next to you was stinking you could go no way man i sit all the way back here and that one can also move over there so you can actually do this maneuver where you can sit close together or far apart and you can have this walkway room through the middle here so a lot going on back here. In fact, look at this. We've even got our own air climate controls. You can't see them from there because it's not on this side. It's on that side. There's a climate control uh, right there in the roof lining just for the rear passengers. Very comfortable, very spacious. These seats are fantastic. And again, plenty of room for me. Uh, the floor is also quite well positioned. So I'm not, my legs aren't too high or too low. And the visibility out the window is fantastic. So actually really, really good. Finally, I think it's time to get in the front. But actually, you know what? There's a couple of things I wanted to show you. I forgot to show you the rear, the third row of seats folding back into the boot because they're quite clever the way they do that. So I'll do that before we get into the front. So yeah, just quickly check this out. All I do is pull that. The seat's gone in. That's it. As simple as that. Same goes for this one. <laughs> Bit too ambitious there. There you go. You just have to pull it and make sure that falls. But there you go. And then you've got your flat load space. Right. Time to get in the front. There you go. So plenty of room up here. Command chairs over here. Let's turn it on. We've got a button. I want you to watch the the instrument panel as we do that. Seven-inch instrument panel and an eight-inch center screen there. Oh, look at that. That's quite good. Isn't it quite space age. I feel like I'm in space odyssey. Check that out. Now, in that in that, you can see my cameraman and colleague Imtishan. There he is. And this is an interesting feature that this car has got. It's called Cabin Watch. And basically, there's a camera. It's up here. Speaker arrangement there. And uh, that camera basically allows you to look back down at your passengers in the back to make sure that they, hey, rock on, to make sure that they're belted in and safe and secure before you drive off. So that's what that's for. Then you go into the home screen and in the home screen, you've got all these. This is basically like a tablet. It's like an app and you've got all of these facilities. So um, now the thing about it is that you've got two screens. You've got that screen, and that screen. And if you don't like the positioning of stuff, you can actually do that. And it's a bit like with the with, with an iPhone, with an app or with a tablet or whatever, you can move them. So there you go. And similarly, once you've done that and you go, well, actually, I haven't got enough apps. You can actually get all of your apps through there. And then you go, well, actually, you know, I want to uh, I want my uh, Ux. Uh, I don't want the Ux. Right. And then you just go back to home and then the Ux app has disappeared. And just to prove it to you, let's do that again. So put that in there and there and then back there. 
and there it is so that's what it does now a couple of things you may have noticed cabin watch is that thing that we were telling you about just now and other things it's got on here uh, my honda music which it kind of generates a playlist for your family and stuff like that trip computer obviously rear entertainment rear entertainment so it's got cabin talk as well that's one of the things in here cabin talk you can click that as well uh, a calculator and clock and file manager and Honda link lots of lot, lots of stuff in this car but what's cabin talk cabin talk is basically if the kids are all on their headphones and as you've seen there's headphone jacks in the back watching a movie there it's a bit like when you're on an airplane and you get into the last scene of the air uh, of your movie as you're watching it and the plane's about to land and they keep making announcements and they keep telling you what the outside temperature is and you're like I don't give a shit what the outside temperature is I'm inside the cabin I don't care if it's outside if, if the outside temperature is coming in here then it's then we're in big trouble anyway so it doesn't really matter so anyway it can do that it can interrupt what you're listening to and you can talk to them so if the kids aren't paying attention and say I know you can hear me I know because I'm pressing the button anyway that's what that does it's got full climate control which is really good it's got a great stereo I've been listening to it really loud I don't know how many speakers it's got I don't, and it doesn't do that thing where a lot of manufacturers do that make thing where they put the make of the brand of the entertainment system I don't know what it is but it sounds really really good it's got a woofer system as well uh, transmission 10 speed transmission and it's got this thing and I put a picture up on this as a guest the car and a lot of people thought new Accord and some people thought new NSX so this has got a little bit of NSX in here because the NSX doesn't have a lever either it has these buttons so in these buttons you get a drive and a sport button if I press that you can see it changes there and it changes into sport you get a neutral button and again that gives you neutral and you get a park button well, there's park right now here's the thing instead of a button for reverse you actually get a little leverish thing and when you get that you get reversing cameras come up by the way it only has a reversing camera it doesn't have a 360 car this size could really do with a 360 it's got an eco mode there why would you need that it's got cool seats down here you've got a blu-ray dvd player that's for the screen in the back you've got another power supply down there if you can see it you've got a nice big uh bin here and you go what's that bin for that's just like an empty space but actually haha it's a drawer there's actually a drawer down there and you can actually change the compartments on the drawer and configure them the way that you want so oh, that's quite clever the, the Honda are pretty good at doing these very se clever center consoles close the drawer you've got cup holders an optional ashtray don't smoke bad for you this is a charging point so it's one of those wireless charging things down there's another deep bin and as you can see I've already got my uh, USB cable uh, plugged in there plus there's a nux there's only one USB there though really I think they could they could fit three in there why haven't they you can close that as well and two cup holders there for the back Again, we've got these armrests, which, is, which are the kind where, you know, if you do that, they're stuck until you pull them all the way back and then back again, and then that set them into position. Over here on the instrument panel, it's quite a nice, quite a space age, uh, 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 sort of sci-fi type of thing arrangement here. The center bit, of course, is, is full digital. And if I press enter, I can switch between those. And if I go through the... Uh, uh, the hang on, how do I do this? Oh, that's, just, that's just the presets. And there is a way of going ah, home there you go that's with it so now i can go i can put all the apps on here navigation and all the rest of it can come up on here as well you can even have a blank setting so if you're feeling like i don't want to be disturbed by anything then you can have a blank setting but uh i like to keep the um they go home i like to keep the trip computer on and as you can see from the trip computer we've been per hundred which isn't too bad really for a car of this size remember 280 brake horsepower uh, v6 uh, over here you have that uh, as well as somewhere to keep your glasses you also have that mirror thing so you can see so in addition to the cabin watch camera you've got that as well and uh, over here you've got lights and uh, stuff like that over here you have got and it's got a lot of driver aids on this car so it's got lane keep assist it's got collision avoidance collision alert the little orange box comes on there telling you about to crash into somebody which maybe by that time it's too late if you're not watching where you're going <laughs> but you also have lane keep assist you have all of these systems down here and uh, that's for you opening and closing the side doors you can do that from here and you can open and close the boot from here as well uh, a bit of space there a bit of space there uh, door pockets down there with a the space for a bottle uh, all pretty straightforward memory seats of course eight-way adjustable power seats so I think the next thing to do really is to take it for a little drive not too much a little drive let's do that now okay so we hit the drive button there we go so we'll just take it for a little drive not too much really I mean to be honest this car is about passengers it's about family that's why I spent so much time talking about you know the cargo capacity and the seating and all the gizmos and gadgets that you've got having said that I mean we'll come on to the straight and I'll open it up a little bit here and you know it's got punch it's got I mean, 280 brake horsepower in this car that's plenty sounds all right too not at all bad 
Gets us, gets us up to speed quite nicely, not an issue, it's got active cruise control and all the rest of it so you can set the distances and all that. Visibility, now I was going to say about these shades that I mentioned before, don't get those because the A-pillars are already pretty thick. They tend to hide bikers and cars on the roundabout and that just makes it worse so don't bother with that. Otherwise it's all around pretty good. Honda haven't done that thing which they've done in the Accord which for example if you indicate right or if you want to move to the right lane it comes up on the center screen. They don't do that in this car for some reason they've decided against it. I can't blame them really, because I never used it. Um, in addition to that, the brakes I think could be better on this car. Uh, it's They're kind of, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They work absolutely fine, but they're a little bit mushy. And uh, I'm just gonna turn around here because this is a bit rough. They're a little bit mushy and imprecise and really, um, uh, you know, and the, and the reassurance isn't quite there. But other than that, they're okay. Aside from that, the ride is pretty good, perhaps slightly brittle, it's probably got the bigger rims on this car, but no, negligible, so not really an issue. Ride is good, handling's actually not too bad as well, but don't get me wrong, it doesn't handle like a car or anything like that. You do realize you're handling something very, very big, it is very bus-like, it's a bit floaty, but it handles okay. It's pretty faithful, the steering, the helm and stuff is pretty good. So aside from that, all good, no issues, it's an easy drive, no problem. Uh, the 360 camera would have been really helped for parking, so that would be a nice feature for them to add in the next update. But I have taken it to shopping malls and stuff like that and parking hasn't really been an issue. So there you go, that's our verdict, our review of the Honda Odyssey 2018 model, our latest car. Tell us what you think, do let us know in the comments below. And do of course please follow us on motoringme.com, follow us on all the social media, that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and all the rest of it. If you're on YouTube, please do like, share and subscribe, that would be great. And also you can follow me, I'll put my at signs here as well, that'd be great, it'd be lovely to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, until the next one.